Thor vs Superman is arguably one of the most discussed battles across debating forums in history, right up there with Goku vs Superman or Naruto vs Ichigo. Although it's a lot more complicated when it comes to the comic book iterations, due to the MCU and the DCEU having far less source material to go off of, it certainly makes this discussion simpler than most. So, let's say that the Asgardian warrior prince, Thor Odin's son, found himself facing off against the Man of Steel, the Man of Tomorrow, the Enforcer of Justice, Superman from Zack Snyder's Justice League, who is stronger, who is faster, and who is generally the better fighter. I decided to go over feats, scaling, statements, and the like to determine which super-powered god amongst mortals would come out on top. First, we need to cover the power of Thor, who has been through grand multitudes of battles and has protected the Earth from godly, extraterrestrial, and extra overpowered threats multiple times. Even in the first film, he casually scales above the Casket of Winners, which has enough potential energy to freeze the entire planet, which should yield at least multi-continental ranges of attack potency and durability for Thor, since Mjolnir, which helps him channel his power, is stated as having no equal by Odin, which would put it above such a powerful artifact. To showcase how destructive his hammer can really be, he was able to destroy a large section of Jotunheim, which has been said by BFX staff as being 100 times as large as the Grand Canyon, which for reference is 1900 square miles, meaning that he destroyed an area of 190,000 square miles, which is as large as medium-sized countries. Thor also manages to defeat and react to the Asgardian Destroyer, who can fire lasers according to the VFX staff, inferring that Thor can react to relativistic and light speeds even pre-awakening. Thor, by the time of the Dark World, manages to shatter the Aether, aka the Reality Stone, which for comparison even the Hadron Enforcer, which is confirmed in guidebooks to being able to shatter moons, was unable to shatter or affect the Power Stone which should be of comparable stature to the other stones. Thor also manages to outspeed the edge of a black hole that was threatening to suck in his brother, with it being confirmed in guidebooks to it being a literal black hole. Within Avengers Age of Ultron, he showcases how mighty his hammer truly is once more, when alongside Tony Stark, he shatters Sokovia, which when dropped from a massive altitude, would have created a mass extinction level event further proving that at the very least, he can destroy and affect countries at this point. By the time Thor Ragnarok rolls around, and with the help of some wise words from his father, Thor obtains a massive power-up after realizing that the Mjolnir was never the source of his power, but a way to concentrate it. After resolving this mental block, he becomes strong enough to defeat the Grandmaster's champion Hulk, who going by how time works there, must have been there for a long-ass time, since he was there for the equivalent of two Earth years, which is pretty crazy, since Loki, who was thrown out of the Bifrost about 10 or so seconds before Thor, was already on Sakaar for several weeks. Once he makes it back to Asgard, Thor manages to withstand multiple attacks from Hela and keeps up with her, which even in a weaker state could shatter the multi-continental to planetary Mjolnir and can throw daggers faster than the massively faster than light Bifrost that can reach Asgard from the Earth in mere moments, which is several galaxies away. Hela also straight up caught up to the Bifrost as well if you want to take it at its highest interpretation. And although he was not as strong as her, he was able to hinder her momentarily. Putting up any fight against Hela is impressive since she considered the Casket of Winners weak and said the Tesseract was not bad in comparison to her, which has life wiping if not planetary levels of power, as confirmed by the first Avengers film. This planetary range of power is consistent, since Odin has been stated in the Art of Thor as having Earth-shattering power. Within Infinity War, he performs many insane feats and shows up for sure. Remember the Hadron Enforcer that can shatter moons and the planet core destabilizing bombs that Rocket Raccoon could make in Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2? Well, the legendary Stormbreaker is said to be even more powerful than pretty much everything like that, and in order to forge it, Thor had to not only move the Nid of Elia rings, which is confirmed by VFX artists as being the size of a small moon, but he also manages to withstand the full concentrated power of a neutron star for a few minutes, which is absolutely insane due to how much pressure and power there is from one. With a neutron star having very high surface gravity, with typical values ranging from 10 to the 12th, to 10 to the 13th meters per square second, which is more than 10 to the 11th times that of the Earth, 
And these stars also have a mass equivalent to 2.5 times that of our sun. And to curb any doubt that he did not actually withstand the full power of one, it is stated by VFX staff that the Space Forge itself is a Dyson Sphere, which is a hypothetical superstructure that is meant to absorb and focus the star's energy. Even our sun alone can produce multi-continental wiping levels of power every second, let alone the energy levels from enduring the concentrated power of a neutron star for several minutes. It's also insane to think that Thor wasn't even at peak strength when he performed this feat, since he had literally just endured an ass beating from Thanos and an explosion from the Power Stone earlier. With this super weapon of mass destruction, he manages to seemingly overpower Thanos' Infinity Gauntlet attack, which even as an absolute lowball, should be in the Planet Plus ranges given that the Power Stone by itself can already threaten to destroy planets even with a scrub lord like Ronin using it let alone it being used by someone as strong as Thanos. However, it was later revealed that Thanos didn't know how to properly use the gauntlet's power, and that the legendary item was essentially hard countered by the Stormbreaker, as revealed by the screenwriters. So he doesn't scale to the full might of the Infinity Gauntlet, but it's fair to say that he can match the output of what individual stones have been shown capable of to an extent. In Endgame, he becomes even stronger despite being at the most difficult time of his life. A common misconception is that Infinity War Thor was superior, but no, with it being confirmed by the Russo brothers that he was stronger than ever before by the end of Endgame. Sure, he is definitely not as fit, but he channeled his resolve and was confident in the battle, especially when he realized that he was still worthy. Although ultimately outmatched by Thanos, he was still able to keep up with him and was even able to react to one of his blade throws, which managed to blitz a Captain Marvel going at full speed, going by the official script. With Captain Marvel being able to travel at massively faster than light speeds when she saved Tony Stark and Nebula, who were a thousand year light years away from the Earth and had about a day of oxygen left. You can certainly argue that alternate versions of heroes don't necessarily scale to each other, but we did see that Thor in What If, who doesn't have Stormbreaker and is likely not as experienced as the main MCU Thor, since he was likely not fighting as much since in his universe, there was peace between Asgard and the other realms. Being able to keep up with Captain Marvel's photon blasts, which uh, are, well, photons, and this is confirmed as well by the BFX staff, straight up calling them bolts of light. So it's not unreasonable for Thor to be faster than light, if not several times faster than that at this point. It's also worth noting that he's comparable to, if not superior to, characters like the spider man who have consistently reacted to an amped Electro's range attacks with him being confirmed to be in electricity, which travels up to near light speeds as electromagnetic waves in a wire. Thor should be at least massively hypersonic due to him scaling to Spider-Man, who also dodged meteors during Infinity War's battle on Titan, and due to him using, well, uh, lightning. He'd also scale somewhat to Thanos, who has reacted to Carol's photon blast, even in a weakened state, and also reacted to Iron Man's repulsors multiple times, which are set to channel light energy. After joining the Guardians of the Galaxy, Thor trains and becomes even stronger than ever before and reaches a new peak, with it being confirmed by Chris Hemsworth himself. He manages to further showcase relativistic to FTL speeds if you want to think that he dodged lasers at the very start of the film, which they very likely are, since even repulsor tech on Earth are said to channel light energy. And once the Asgardian God of Thunder makes it to Omnipotent City, he was able to blitz Zeus with his own Thunderbolt, with Zeus being considered the strongest god at the time, putting him well above Egyptian gods like Khonshu, who in the Moon Knight series was able to alter the stars. He was also able to clash with Gore, who was even stronger than Hela as confirmed by the director, and who Thor believed that they would need an army of the strongest gods to defeat him. This stellar scaling for the gods is consistent, since Odin was able to turn Frigga, his wife, into several stars in the film and in the comic. You could also argue that this is simply spatial manipulation or simply a creation feat, but creation feats and destruction feats go hand in hand. Plus, if other characters already have planetary and much higher levels of power, it wouldn't be unreasonable for the next step up to be at this range, especially when you consider the fact that the next echelon, the Celestials, are able to create galaxies. We've also seen Captain Marvel reignite a star, who Thor is comparable to if not stronger than, depending on how strong you think he got in Thor 4 in comparison to her in the Marvels and the Disney Plus series. Regardless, it's pretty safe to say that Thor more than likely reaches planetary plus to multi-planetary levels, 
arguably stellar levels of attack potency and durability, especially if you think that with all of these power-ups he got that he surpasses father. And that is just with his raw power alone. That is not to mention that with the Bifrost Beam, he can destroy multiple continents if not an entire planet, since Loki had planned to use it to destroy Jotunheim. As for Superman, he's at the very least country level, since he's been able to move a tectonic plate in order to prevent an earthquake that was described as being devastating, with magnitude 6 and magnitude 7 earthquakes being able to release enough energy to level cities easily. He's more than likely multi-continental to multi-planetary ranges of power, due to him being able to effortlessly bully Steppenwolf, who according to Zack Snyder, shattered a moon in his battle with the real Doomsday, which is even more impressive due to Krypton's intense gravity, which is greater than that of the Earth, which is also thanks to it being in range of Rao, a red dwarf star, with 5 times the size of our Sun. With our Sun already being able to exert surface gravity levels, of 274 meters per second squared, or 28 times that of the Earth, meaning that Rao exerts even far superior levels. Superman would also scale from being able to separate the mother boxes alongside Cyborg, with one mother box already being far superior to the Kryptonian world engine, which can already terraform entire planets, although this does take time. This planetary to multiplanetary range is consistent, since Bruce Wayne implied that one would have to be stronger than a planet to resist and separate them other boxes, and that it would require that much energy to resurrect Superman's dead body, which means that even his corpse alone already requires planetary levels to revive it. Although it's worth noting that the separation feat did take a good amount of effort on Superman's part. He would also likely scale above the Blue Beetle Scarab, which was able to effortlessly shatter a planet on its way to the Earth. A level of power which is confirmed in a DC Nation interview. Although Blue Beetle is part of the new DC Universe reboot, he seems to also be part of the Snyderverse since there's references in the movie, and the director, Angel Manuel Soto, even confirms that they are references to Man of Steel. In terms of speed, he's at least relativistic since he's been able to outspeed the Phantom Drive, which is confirmed akin to a black hole or singularity. And he's also been able to blitz most of the Justice League, including Cyborg who can perceive events in nanoseconds, which for the record is such an insanely small unit of time that even as fast as light is, it can only travel one foot during that time frame according to MIT. Cyborg can also react to his heat vision, which is stated in the Batman vs Superman art book as being light. Wonder Woman also got Blitz, who was also able to react to Doomsday's heat vision, which should have similar speeds to Superman's own. Going by Cyborg's own perception speed, you can definitely argue for light and massively faster than light speeds and combat speed and perception time for Superman. And for the record, it is confirmed in art books that his flight speed is equal to his reflexes. His speed is also insane enough to keep up with the Flash's own as well. He's also equipped with a Frost Breath, which managed to help him effortlessly destroy Steppenwolf's axe. So generally, who would be able to win this battle? I think that in the grand scope of things, Thor is certainly stronger, more durable, more experienced, and more skilled, while Superman is around as fast if not faster than him, even with the conservative arguments. Thor's win con is to land a critical hit with the Stormbreaker, which could even cut through Thanos' head, and try to stun Superman with his lightning. Even if he gets disarmed, he should be able to get the best of Superman, due to his skill allowing him to outmaneuver several trained shield agents with ease when he was powerless. Indeed, Thor does have arguments for having lightspeed reaction times and beyond, but it is more contentious in comparison to Superman's own feats, who has more solid lightspeed scaling. And there's also weird downplay you can do with Thor being blitzed by Quicksilver, despite being unable to react to bullets twice. But it is worth noting that the same Quicksilver was also able to react to Mjolnir, which quickly traveled from outside the Earth's atmosphere and back, and allowed Jane Foster to travel and search around the Earth twice. Which would require massively hypersonic speeds at the very least, and higher depending on the time frame. Regardless, I think that at the very least, they should both have comparable speeds, but if I had to pick one, I'd give the clear edge to Superman. Although Thor does have superior attack potency and durability, the gap between them isn't so huge that Superman wouldn't be able to hurt him or at least wear him down eventually with his speed and the heat vision spam in combination with his frost breath. Otherwise, I believe that Thor would win with very high difficulty more times than not. 
There's also an interesting multiplier you could grant Thor, based on how many attacks it took him to destroy a section of the Rainbow Bridge. In Thor 1, pre-awakening, it takes him about 10 hits to break it, while in Thor Ragnarok, it only takes him 1. However, there is a very clear win con for Superman, and that is scaling him from the original Justice League storyboard, who was able to push Darkseid back, a threat to the multiverse that had conquered hundreds of thousands of worlds, to the point that he had to find Lois and kill her. Superman, while under the control of Darkseid, was also able to wipe the floor with the Justice League and force the Flash to travel back in time just to survive, which can be argued as being immeasurable speeds. If so, he would definitely blitz and defeat Thor with ease if he scales in any magnitude to those levels of speed, which at the very least should make him massively faster than light. These speeds are very likely, especially when you consider that General Zod, who Superman clearly kept up with, was able to react to another Barry within the Flash movie numerous times. If the Kryptonians scale in any magnitude to a percentage of the Speed Force, it should grant Superman a very clear speed advantage in any case. But yeah, please let me know who you think wins, and thanks for watching. Peace out.